That looks nice. And there's a real sense of depth with this lens. See it here, foreground is sharp, background is soft. And same again here. It's fast, as we can see. Focus. Alrighty, so let's talk about this 35mm f2 full frame lens for Z mount. Now, I'm, I'm really excited about this lens. I've been shooting it for two or, two or three weeks now, maybe even four weeks. It's full frame, it's well built, it's F2, which provides a pretty short depth of field. And I have to say, I'm really liking the images that come out of it. Now, of course, it's full AF, full aperture control, and it does have a switch on the side so you can go between automatic focus and manual focus. Look, it's a simple lens, there's not much to it, but it's an affordable lens. It's Z mount, it's full frame, and it is fully automated. And this is a brand new lens from Yongnyo. Now, if you jump on American websites, you'll see this lens sitting at around 299 US dollars, which brings it in at around 450 to 500 Australian dollars. Now, I, I'm excited by what I'm seeing by this lens. I think it's of great quality. From my perspective, this is a great opportunity to get a 35mm lens that's quite fast and an almost insignificant difference between the f1.8 when it comes to light gathering and depth of field. Now I've used this lens for three or four weeks in various situations and I think it performs really well. As I said, the AF works fine. It's snappy as we would expect on a camera like the ZF or the Z8. I haven't used it on the Z5, Z6 or Z7. On the ZF in Sunset Orange, I've been, uh, I've been doing a little bit of blinging but I, I, think, I think it looks cool. The action on the focus throw is probably not as firm as I would like it to be, but I think with this sort of lens, this is not gonna be used very much. Otherwise, I like it. Build quality is good. This here is metal, and of course, the mount is metal as well. That's 18000 F2, F3.2. F3.5 looks really nice. You can use this lens on any of the APS-C bodies as well because of course they have the same size mount. Now when you multiply 35mm by 1.5 you get a 52.5mm field of view equivalent. That's fine. I think that makes this a really interesting and compelling lens. Essentially a 50 millimeter walk around lens at f2. Okay, let's take a quick look at the images in Capture One. We are full frame here. All I've done is bring up the shadows as you can see. There is the lens, the YN35 F2 DF DSM. Now it does have a stepping motor which seems to be very fast for focus. We are on the Nikon Z. F. This is what I was talking about, depth of field. This gentleman was probably about three metres, two to three metres away from me, six to nine feet. And you can see we're getting very pleasant out of focus background area there at 100%. The stitches in his shirt are looking good and obviously the details in the hat. I think that's a pretty good result when you think about this lens being 299. Now, DxO say this lens is basically as sharp in the middle as the Nikon 35mm 1.8. DxO also state it's not as bright. It's more like 2.2 f-stops from a t-stop perspective from a light transmission perspective whereas the nikon 35 1.8 is 1.8 or very near two now we do start to see a little bit of green a little bit of green fringing which we can see in here it's there it's minor but if it's something that you don't like, this is a shop that I sell to in the city called Paper Republic. They buy my books. There's my book. And they buy my greeting cards. There's my greeting cards. Yay. I was out with the family. It was Sunday. We were eating dumplings. We went for a walk through the city 
again, a pleasant rendition. It, it, it just There's something about this lens that doesn't feel to me like it's as crazy sharp as the Nikon Z lenses, the 35 1.8, for example. And that's okay. What I've found is, is a lot of these third-party lenses are not quite resolving the same way as the Z lenses, but they're kind of halfway between an F lens and a Z lens or somewhere in between, which for some people, they don't want every pixel to be razor sharp. That's personal choice. And so this does have a kind of whimsical sort of look. I'm not sure you can see it once this has been compressed and then compressed again for YouTube. And then you end up watching it on your screen. There's my cards again on a rack at the same store. This one is captured in DX. If we look here, we are at 3,900 pixels on the long edge, which means we're in APS-C. I was just messing around to see how I felt about 10 megapixels on the ZF. And at this point, we are at 100%. This particular shot seems to have really brought out the green fringing, which you can see here on the peg and on the shoe. It's Again, it's look, it's no big deal. It's up to you. This is a very affordable lens. We can see it sharp. This is particularly high contrast situation, which of course is what tests cameras and lenses. Just wanted to show you what the bokeh look like and here it is. This is the middle of the frame and I, I don't mind that. I, I actually like all different types of bokeh. It's definitely onion skinning a little bit and it's certainly going to lemon. This is the this is the middle So as we go towards the edges. So this is at F2. Cakes. I love this because this is the sort of thing that maybe hobbyists and enthusiasts will have this sort of lens. It's a walk around lens and you just want to capture cool stuff like this. And I, and I, we can see here that distortion, there doesn't seem to be a lot of distortion going on. And I like that. And it's, it's sharp where, you know, we're handheld here. We're handheld at 125th of a second at F2. This is towards the bottom of the frame. And it, and, and it looks good. And this is the corner of the frame. And it looks good. I don't know what you expect when you're spending 299 US dollars. I actually think it's a really good result for that sort of price point. And here we are right at the top of the frame again at F2. And this is pretty sharp. Now we are beyond 100%. Good result. Very good color. I think pretty sharp all the way, certainly in the middle and all the way to the edges. We are wide open at F2. Yeah. Uh, happy with that. I think here was another one where I was trying to get it even more straight. And if you just look at those edges, you know, they're good. And again, I would only reiterate a little bit of that green. There's a little bit of that green fringing. Not too much in this particular situation. And we might just be seeing an, a smidge of distortion going on here. Let's grab our tool that we use for rotation. Yes, we can certainly see there's just a little bit of distortion going there. So no correction has been applied. So this is what the lens is doing natively. So that's actually pretty good, I reckon. Minimum close focus, I think, is 35 centimeters, which is just over 12 inches, uh, 13, 14 inches. And again, the background bokeh, it all looks good there. It's a very pleasing lens, very pleasing lens for the price point. This looks sumptuous. I've just brought up the shadows ever so slightly. That's it. Yeah, look, I'm I'm really happy where this lens falls, the quality that it's given you at the price point. There's really, really to me, the only thing that's a major negative is the green fringing. So who who's this lens for? Well, optically, it looks great. It's certainly sharp in the middle. And a lens like this, we can't expect it to be at the same level as the Nikon Nikkor Z lenses, but I think it's doing a really good job optically. I've found the bokeh to look really pleasing and I really like the out of focus areas of this lens. I think this is a great travel and all purpose lens. And as I said, if, if you crop it to APS-C or use it in APS-C because that's the camera that you have, you have between a 35 mil and a 52.5 mil equivalent. That gives you some pretty good options. Now this lens also comes in E mount and it's written on B&H that it comes in RF mount. I don't know if that's still the case considering Canon shut down the RF mount completely a year or so ago. That's something that you'll have to take a look at for yourself and see if you can get hold of an RF version of this lens if you're interested in it. It's possible that this is one of the lens manufacturers that Canon are starting to talk to again. I've read about the fact that Canon was maybe going to start to allow third-party lenses again. Time will tell. 
I think this is a great option for people who are looking for affordable, fast primes. 35mm, you've got to decide whether that's a focal length that you enjoy. Some people do. My way of photography is I enjoy whatever lens I have with me. I'm not stuck in any particular focal range. I like the 35 because it's sort of sitting you between a wide angle and getting you sort of pretty close to a 50. I think it's a really useful focal length. So I'd love to know in the comments below, is this lens for you? 35 millimeter F2, great price, good quality. I call this a good quality lens, full AF, full aperture control full EXIF data will come through. And build quality from my perspective is good. It seems to be an all metal exterior and of course a metal mount. Is this for you? Let me know in the comments below. All right, it's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share and please like. All right, bye for now.